Hello, my friend, and welcome to Something for Everybody. My name is Aaron Mashpitz, and today is a solo episode of the podcast where I'm discussing four things that I quit to transform my life. So let's jump right in. The fastest way to improve your life is not by adding new things to serve you, but by quitting what no longer does. In other words, the fastest way to improve your life is to stop doing things that make you feel like shit. Let me say that again. The fastest way to improve your life is to stop doing the things that make you feel like shit. So again, here are the four things that I quit to transform my life. Number one, I quit complaining. One of the most important rules for my life don't complain about anything. And of course, I don't always hit the mark when it comes to this, but it's something that I like to keep in the back of my mind all of the time. It's one of my most important rules and one of my most important values, and it has exponentially made my life better by keeping this at the forefront. Don't complain about anything. If it's within your control, go and do something about it. If it's not within your control, try your best to let it go because you don't want to waste any of your precious energy thinking about it, okay? So think about drawing a circle on a sheet of paper and inside that circle is your circle of influence. What are the things that you always have control over day in and day out? Our circle of influence, the things we have control over, the things we can influence, our focus, energy, attention, wanna be on those things inside of our circle of influence. It's really important because we have energy and time are limited resources. They're very precious and we wanna give our energy we want to give our best effort to the things that are within our control that will actually move the needle forward on where we want to be in life. And so here is an ancient parable to hammer down this point. He who blames others has a long way to go on his journey. He who blames himself is halfway there. He who blames no one has already arrived. When you complain, you are giving away all of your power. Take back that power and make this a rule in your life. Don't complain about anything and allow you quitting to complain, transform your life in a positive direction, knowing that you're action oriented and focusing on the things in your circle of influence or within your control. That's number one. Number two. I quit allowing negative people to drain my energy. Here's the harsh truth. A person is either holding you back or they're pushing you forward. There really is no in between. Either a person is holding you back or they're either pushing you forward. Again, there's no in between. You're either stepping forward into growth or you're stepping back into comfort, stepping forward into growth, stepping back into comfort. Again, there's no in between. So it works the same with the people in your life as it does with improving yourself. And so when we allow negative people to drain our energy, we have less of it to offer the, to the positive people in our life that lift us up, that make us vibrate on a higher vibration, that are energy givers. I talk about this a lot when it comes to being a great teammate. And being a great teammate is really about building relationships. But I relate it to a sports team. The people that are the absolute best teammates always bring positive energy and they're energy givers. They're not energy vampires. They don't suck the energy out of the room every time they step into the dugout or the field or the clubhouse or um, the workout session, wherever are. When they show up, people are like, yeah, that guy's bringing energy. He's bringing positive vibes. He is someone who elevates the vibration in the room and lifts everyone's spirit up. So again, when we allow negative people to drain our energy, we have less of that energy, which I said is a precious resource to give or offer to the positive people in our life that lift us higher. We want to be around those people more because people are either holding you back or they're pushing you forward. And we want to try and be around those people who are pushing us forward to be the best versions of ourselves who are energy givers. And so an important question to ask yourself that you must 
you must and need ask yourself is, who are you saying no to? Who are you saying no to by saying yes to this negative person? Again, let me say that again. Who are you saying no to by saying yes to this negative person. So you're saying yes to this negative person. Who are you saying no to? Maybe not out loud, but intrinsically you're saying no to this person who could potentially lift you up higher by saying yes to this negative person who you know is energy taking, who you know is not good for you, who you know is holding you back. You're saying yes to them, maybe for some ties, some relations, some long-term stuff, things that you have to might sort out. It's not just an easy thing, but you're saying no to this person who potentially is the person who's going to push you forward, who wants to elevate you, who's lifting you higher. So who is that person for you? You have to answer that question quite honestly and then do some reflection about it and then maybe take some action based on the person you want to be and how you want to live your life. So it's an important question that you need to ask yourself and actually answer honestly, right? Who are you saying no to by saying yes to this negative person? Very important because negative people are are like boat anchors. They create a drag on your growth and progress. And we want to try and eliminate as many boat anchors in our life as we can. Now, we can't be perfect. We're never going to be perfect. We're thinking about progress over perfection, but we can do our best to try and be around these people who lift us up, who are energy givers, who push us forward to be our best selves, who listen, who have less judgment, who are uh, want the best for us, who celebrate our success. All of these things are about basically creating great relationships. And we know from all of these episodes that I've done that great relationships are the cornerstone, the absolute foundation of living your absolute best life. And so it starts with not allowing negative people to drain my energy, right? That's number two. I quit allowing negative people to drain my energy. Back to number one was I quit complaining. And number two was I quit. I quit allowing negative people to drain my energy. Just two more. Number three, I quit allowing overthinking to hold me back. There is someone out there living the life you want simply because they took action and you didn't. They aren't smarter than you. They aren't more skilled than you. They aren't more resourceful than you. They're not more capable than you. They're not better than you. None of that is true. The only thing that is true is they acted when you didn't. They acted and you didn't. 90% of overthinking comes from this single flawed belief that the decision is what matters. The ultimate outcome of any given situation is governed far more by the actions that follow a decision rather than the decision itself. Yes, the decision has some merit. Of course it does. But mostly everything is governed by the actions you take day in and day out. And so again, there is someone out there living the life you want simply because they took action and you did not. So it all starts with action. So you can combat a lot of overthinking by taking this three-stepped approach, which I've talked about before. But if you're a brand new listener, perfect. Thank you for being here. It's about awareness, acceptance, and action. We're aware. We're aware that something, we're overthinking about something or we need to make a change or this or that. Awareness is always going to be that initial step in trying to make change, right? Because we can't make change on anything that we're not first aware of, we don't first recognize. So awareness is always going to be that first step. And then the second step is equally as important, uh, equally as important because we're thinking about acceptance. I have to accept the fact that this is my starting point. This is where I'm at, but I have the agency and the power to move move up from here, small steps at a time. But the most important action, what we're talking about here to really combat overthinking is action, is action, is action, action, action. It's always going to be action. Thinking about doing the thing is not doing the thing. Reading about doing the thing is not doing the thing. Thinking about thinking about doing the thing is not doing the thing. Watching a video about doing the thing is not doing the thing. Listening to a podcast about doing the thing is not doing the thing. The only thing that's doing the thing is doing the thing. That means the only thing that will ever move the needle forward is action. So if you want to quit overthinking and stop letting it hold you back, 
you have to act. Yes, it's really hard to get to the starting line and it's really hard to make that first step, but it's about awareness, acceptance, action, knowing all of those things, putting it together, and then getting yourself to that starting line and making that first step, then creating momentum and momentum and momentum and moving forward inch by inch, little by little from there. Yes, you have to make the decision to start, but most of it of the situation after that is governed far more by the actions. So make a decision, then make it right through your actions, through your actions, your actions, your actions by doing the thing. So number three was I quit allowing overthinking to hold me back. Number four, last one, I quit worrying about the opinion of others. So there are two, there are two big mistakes in life. One is worrying about what other people think about you. And second is believing that other people think about you in the first place. So those two sort of get us caught in a trap. And then we start to worry about the opinions of others and it paralyzes us. Then we don't move into action like we talked about in the previous one. And so the spotlight effect is a common psychological phenomenon where we overestimate the degree to which other people are noticing or observing our actions, behaviors, appearance, or results. Basically, what it means is we think everyone is thinking about us, but in reality, they aren't. Nobody is thinking about you. Nobody cares about you. And that should be a freeing reality just in terms of the actions you take and the movements you make towards being closer to your dreams. Now, of course, people actually do care about you. People love you. In the second one of this episode, we talk about relationships. So there are people that love and support you and want to see you do your absolute best. But we overestimate how much people are actually thinking about us, especially in a situation where we don't really know anyone. We think everyone is thinking about us and looking at us, but in reality, they just aren't. They're too worried about thinking about what other people think about their thinking, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, holy cow, there's so much happening in this space when really we can just simplify it down. We can simplify it down to really, you aren't afraid to fail. You are afraid of what others will think of you if you do fail. Well, there's no one's thinking about you. No one's thinking about you. They're too busy thinking about themselves and other people thinking about them. And if they fail, they do this or they wear this or whatever the case may be. So no matter what, again, it boils down to action. Go do the damn thing. Go do the damn thing. Because again, at the end of your life, you're never going to say, man, I wish I didn't go for it all the way. You are going to regret not going for it. So there's always going to be greatness. There's always going to be greatness in just going to do the damn thing. And so don't let the opinions of others hold you back, right? Again, there's two big mistakes in life, worrying about what other people think about you and believing that other people think about you in the first place. So knowing those things and now understanding the spotlight effect, that should free us. That should free us and go back to number one, where we talked about the things in our circle of influence. Other people are not in your circle of influence. You cannot control other people, no matter how hard you try. But what you can control is your actions, your fundamentals, your attention, your focus, your response, the way you breathe, the way you exercise, the way you dial in on your fundamentals. All of those things are within your control, giving you more agency over your life and knowing what's good for you and what's not good for you. And so you're only worried about that circle of influence and knowing that everything really is predicated on the actions you take day in and day out. And again, knowing that at the end of your life, when you're about to take your last damn breath or you just boop yourself over to your funeral and you're having a bird's eye view over your funeral or over your eulogy, people are going to talk about the things you went after, the characters that you represented. They're never going to say, oh, he sort of almost went for this one thing that one time that would have been cool because you would regret that. You would regret that fact. Zoom yourself down to your last day ever on this planet. You will never, 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 never regret the fact that you tried and that you went all in. But there is a lot of regret and resentment if you never even took the first step. And I know it's fucking really hard to get to the starting line and make that first step, especially if there's so many things happening in your life. There's so many moving pieces. You've been through so many different challenges and obstacles and you're in this place. But you're still here. 
You're not dead yet. We only envisioned ourselves with our last breath. We only envisioned ourselves at our own funeral. But you're here right now listening to this breathing, not dead yet. So that means you still got gas in the tank. That means you can still go do the damn thing. That means you can go do the thing and you can take little steps every single day. You can take little steps every single day to inch you closer to the person you want to be, to improving your life and becoming that best version of yourself because you are not dead yet and you are capable of this and you can do it. But you have to realize some of these things that we talked about in these podcasts and that the number one way to improve your life is to stop doing the things that make you feel like shit and then start getting after it day in and day out on the most consistent basis you can possibly do and then work from there. You got this. I got a little fired up there at the end because I really care about this. These four things really helped me transform my life and expressing these things and talking about these things on this podcast has really helped me understand these concepts better so I can apply them to my life. And my only hope for doing all of these solo episodes is that you then take this information, you deeply apply it into your life and you also transform into the most capable, best loving version of yourself. That's fucking amazing for you and for your community and the people around you and for the larger world because you matter so freaking much you matter so much that every little thing you do is important that's how much that's how, that's how significant you are that's how much you matter and that's how much the things you do in this world matter that's why going after and doing the thing is so important and taking that first very first action step and then moving closer towards that best version of you every single day because it's a never-ending journey and that's the beauty of it all we can always improve we can always get better we can always love harder we can always be kinder and more supportive Um, but again those are the things that I quit because again the fastest way to improve your life is to stop doing things that make you feel like shit and so the four things I quit to transform my life again is I quit complaining I quit allowing negative people to drain my energy I quit allowing overthinking to hold me back and I quit worrying about the opinions of others. So thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Lots of love and cheers. Thank you very much for tuning into that episode. And if you enjoyed it, click right here, right here for another full length episode of the podcast. And please don't forget to subscribe. But most importantly, most importantly, above all else, please, please take good care of yourselves and others. And I'll see you next time. Lots of love. Cheers.